good, Besan. Good. Um, so I'm just gonna ask you a few questions, and um, just please answer them to the best of your ability. So, um, can you please start with your name, age, and occupation? Uh, my name is Uma Mani. I will be 57 tomorrow. Happy birthday! And <laughs> thank you, Ishan. And uh, I'm an environment artist, painter. Uh, so I paint only the coral reefs on the pink coral reefs. Okay, thank you. And um, how did you get started with diving? I was painting uh, coral reefs as a theme of my uh, painting uh, of my paintings, and uh, I thought it's high time I saw them for real. Uh, so I became a diver at the age of 49. I got certified as a diver at the age of 49, uh, eight years before. So that's how I started to become a scuba diver. And there was there's no stopping it after which, no looking back. Awesome. And what enabled you to push away your fears and uh, basically do your first dive? Because I saw in your documentary, you said you were very scared to jump in the water. Yeah, I was very scared because uh, I thought I'll die after my first dive. <laughs> but uh, I was so much of self-talking. I told now there is no escaping. Now you have come all the way. Then I have to die. So I thought, uh, so that's what motivated me, self-talk. And then I jumped into the water. Okay. And uh, was there anything that surprised you on your first time? Yeah, the, the reefs are much more beautiful than I thought. Uh, because I've seen them uh, only in the films or documentaries. So when I saw them for real, they are much more beautiful. And uh, the fishes, I saw many fishes around each coral reef, each coral colony. So I was so amazed. That was... Uh, you know, surreal. I never thought it would be that beautiful. Mm -hmm. And was it exactly how you sort of imagined it to be? Or like, um, how different was it to like the documentaries you saw? Other than the fact it was... In many places, the reefs were beautiful. When the ocean is good, when the ocean water is good. So it was beautiful. beautiful I never imagined. And in places where the ocean water is not treated well, uh, the reefs were really disturbing. And I never imagined the, the condition of the reef would be that bad. So I know it has like a, both sides. And can you describe like the condition of those reefs a little bit, please? Yeah, come again, Isan, please. Sorry, can you like describe the condition of those reefs, um, the ones that have been damaged? Oh my God, that was awful. I was terrified on seeing them because I've seen only beautiful reefs. Uh, and I end up smiling all the time under water, mask. It's filled with water. You're not supposed to smile under water. On the contrary, when I saw these uh, bad uh, and disturbed reefs which were destroyed uh, because of man-made disasters, needless to say. I was crying and the mask was filled. <laughs> I felt so bad mm -hmm. on seeing them because I never thought I would see such a reef. And, and what about like the marine life? Was there any fishes in those areas or was it just dead coral? Yeah, there, there were hardly any fishes. The, the water was very murky mm -hmm. and the visibility was very bad. I felt I was alone underwater. I couldn't see the other diver nearby who was diving. Such was the visibility. So reefs are bad when the, the ocean is bad and the water is murky. So it's a, it's a, it's a vicious cycle, one affecting the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And how do you think your background in art affects or like impacts your work? That thing, I think that is the only weapon I have now. 
mm. to tell the world now see this is like pen is a weapon for writers right so this is the the, the brush is a weapon i have where i can fight mm -hmm. this silently yeah i wouldn't call myself an activist but silently i can tell people to see this is what i saw under water you could have seen my painting called hope for the coral reef where the water is black and all the reefs are dead plastic and all the debris floating and all the industries industrial you know the smoke and pollution is there so this i cannot go and explain to everyone but i put, put this painting up people understand oh okay so that's how i am able to convey uh, what the corals feel what the oceans feel in the form of my art okay okay that's that's very interesting and how do you um think you know how how has your gender affected your work have you sort of faced any criticism or any challenges challenges uh challenges that what it it, it uh, i i had to overcome the challenges i have to face the challenges my way because uh, on my own my family is very supportive and gender no people appreciated me but the family the older women in the family were little apprehensive as to, at this age you should you ought to get grandchildren why do you want to jump into water <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so that is what but they understood my passion but because i don't fight i just smiled and and i do what i want so uh, that's what happened otherwise uh, people encouraged me supported me many children like you came forward and really they said uh, i'm inspiring so that that makes me dive more that's more like an encouragement for me uh, okay okay yeah i loved your documentary by the way it was very interesting and yeah i was i was very moved by it. um and in your experience with uh, coral restoration do you see any frequent breaches uh, in protocol by tourists uh, that threaten the coral like touching the coral or like um kicking it and stuff like that no i have dived most of it with a with a team who are very responsible who are responsible divers mm -hmm. otherwise on the beaches i have seen the seashore you mean i have seen so many people littering it with plastic and ghost uh, nets all over so people litter the beaches and uh, in turn it enters the ocean so that is what is causing uh, so much of concern divers are more, more or less very responsible but the people walking on the seashore yeah they should understand it will all reach uh, into the ocean the fish i see yes and uh, what's the most challenging part of your work and how do you overcome those challenges mm, as an artist um even in like restoration and everything ah restoration yes i have a very very big challenge to face because uh, my major is not science i am not a marine biologist so i have to uh, either do a course on coral restoration coral planting uh, or just watch people the researchers uh, doing the coral restoration because that is one challenge and i would like to do a course in coral planting this is what driving drove me uh, to do a course in coral planting so that is the restoration part of it but i thought the the debris and the plastics and everything should be collected on so at source that is the greatest challenge for mankind mm -hmm. because you should not let it go into the ocean so it has to be segregated and that is the main challenge all the debris entering the ocean uh, i i think it, it is a challenge for all the humans and we are responsible also not uh, see to that it doesn't enter the ocean and what about the challenges you face as an artist as an artist yes i am very i am a happy painter <laughs> i'm so happy so, now i have two challenges no, no, my no dog is playing around my painting 
my dog playing around my painting that is the only challenge <laughs> I have to keep them away. So yeah, I saw the your dogs are very cute. I like them. They're very nice. And so uh, that's the only challenge. Otherwise, I'm happy. Okay. Awesome. <laughs> and in your opinion, what efforts can be made to help restore the marine ecosystems? Every human being, every earthling living in the planet should do their bit. Yeah, the resp- responsibly disposing the garbage and the solar. Every roof should have solar. Even if it's a roof of a car or a boat should have a solar. So we'll have to uh, go into sustainable, uh, you know, energy. It is possible, right? So and uh, saving rainwater, though it is not portable, this rainwater can be used for gardening, for cleaning, because this rainwater when gushes from through the rivers and taking away all the fertilizers plastics everything into the ocean even if it is a landlocked place uh, the rainwater takes away everything carries along with it mm-hmm. so that way if we save rainwater uh, we use less of electricity uh, by using the motor right yeah all it has to be done by all of us i'm doing it I'm doing a bit of it. I'm doing composting, segregating the plastic. Uh, we have a small solar at home. Um, then uh, rainwater, yes. Okay. Cool. And um, I saw in your documentary you worked with um, a lot of school children, and you were showing them like the coral and your footage. And can you just tell me a little bit more about your work with uh, young people and students? Now, more schools, thank you, Ishan. I like that question. <laughs> uh, because more schools and colleges are calling me for that now. Come and talk, give a talk. Either in Zoom, it was happening in Zoom for the past two years. Now, I'll be going to the universities and schools and take my mask and snorkel and show them this is how we dive and tell them this is what is happening because the future is in your hands. Uh, the world, we are going to give it over to you. So as children, it's your responsibility. So uh, schools and colleges are inviting me to come and talk to them. So it's happening. So whenever possible, I make a visit and talk to the children. And what do you what do you talk to them about? Like what do you tell them about? Yeah, first thing is, uh, many of them do not know that the ocean, the plastic they use, least is the ocean. I tell them the toothbrush you you use. It goes to the ocean if you don't you give it for recycling. So these three things, uh, recycle, make compost, so rain, save rainwater, go solar. These three things tell your parents and think you can also do. Only the, these things I talk to them. I, t- I talk to them about, and they ask me about my diet. How, how deep can you go? How do you know it's time? How many hours do you stay underwater? Do you carry food with you? <laughs> and how long do you, can you stay underwater? So these are the things uh, they are eager to know about. So it's an interactive one. Uh, do I take tamarind rice along with me underwater? Because that is what you carry for picnics, right? Mm-hmm. So they think I'm going for a picnic underwater and stay for a very long time and come <laughs> in the next picnic. <laughs> so children yeah, are very eager. To know and they, many of them have learned swimming and many of them wanted to become oceanographers or marine biologists okay cool thank you and um sorry one last question let me read it okay so what do you think is the most important lesson students should learn uh from your work it's not uh, age is just a number. You can learn anything at any 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 uh, part, you know age, and uh, saving the world now. Climate change, everything they should know. The curriculum should include climate change, and every child will because the children are very very intelligent and they have a different, I would say, uh, solution for this. They will find a solution. So we'll have to just tell them the problem. They'll find solutions 
and they will they are easy and eager to implement it also they will have many solution just tell them these are the problem and this is your world you have to take care what is the solution so they will come up with many things you just have to uh, introduce them the problem what the world is facing now especially when it comes to climate and the children have the solution they are very intelligent so i just put forth all the cards all the problems the world has so they will come up they take care of it okay